For Hype Plus, I'm Terrence Sims. Sometimes when forces join, they're stronger as one commodity than they are as individuals. Since the beginning of music, we've seen R&B groups come together, dominate the charts, collect the accolades, enjoy the admiration from fans, critics, and the women. However, during this success is usually the time where petty jealousies, bad contracts, and the desire to move not to something bigger can materialize. The breakup of Drew Hill, responsible for hits like Tell Me and In My Bed, was no exception. When the group went their separate ways, lead singer Cisco was the first to try his hand at a solo career, which surpassed everyone's expectations. Cisco's debut album, Unleash the Dragon, would outsell any Drew Hill album by itself, spawning several hit singles, taking him to an entirely new level. With a debut album like that, Cisco was expected to be the next big thing. Unfortunately, he would fail to live up to the hype with his second project as Return of the Dragon didn't even come close to the phenomenon that caught everyone by surprise. With that disappointing second album, Cisco never seemed to run with the momentum he built for himself. We know Cisco for the platinum and gold hair, the Eddie Murphy delirious inspired attire, and the recognizable voice that was present throughout the 90s and early 2000s. His near disappearance has left fans to wonder where he's been and how someone who was once on top of the music charts had such a hard time maintaining his position. Here's why Cisco fell off. The quartet of Drew Hill, Cisco, Nokio, Jazz, and Woody Rock first got together in high school after performing a number of talent shows, quickly catching the eye of the young talent manager, Kevin Peck. Once the group landed what would be a shady record deal with Island Records, Drew Hill shot to stardom seemingly overnight with the release of their first single, Tell Me. Tell Me peaked at number five on the Billboard R&B chart. Drew Hill's debut album was released in November 1996 and was certified platinum less than a year later. In addition to Tell Me, the self-titled album was also supported by the singles In My Bed, Never Make a Promise, and Five Steps. Two years later, the group followed up with the Enter the Drew, which was even more successful. By the time Enter the Drew came out, their first album had reached the status of double platinum. Less than a year after it was released, Enter the Drew was also certified double platinum. Enter the Drew could be remembered by its singles, How Deep Is Your Love, These Are The Times, and You Are Everything. The group was off to an amazing start. However, after the success of their sophomore album, the group would shock the world after announcing that one of its members, James Woody Rock Green, would be departing the group in order to pursue gospel music. According to the Baltimore Sun who reported the story, the split was amicable. Woody released a statement that read, My decision to leave Drew Hill was laid upon my heart by the Lord. It seems as though the transition to gospel music wasn't the only factor that led to Woody's departure. Contractual issues and jealousy among members were part of the show. While on set of the film Wild Wild West, it became clear to Woody that he wasn't living up to his full potential. From my understanding, it was Will Smith featuring Drew Hill, but when we got there, it seemed like it was the cards for it would be Will Smith featuring Cisco. Once again, you back to just being here just for the sake of being here. And that was basically my departure. This was the beginning of a significant change in Drew Hill as they opted to not replace Woody, but instead tour as a trio as opposed to a quartet. Eventually, the group fell apart as many felt it wasn't the same without the original four members. This prompted lead singer Cisco to release his debut solo album, Unleash the Dragon, in November of 1999, and the LP would take Cisco to new heights as a solo artist and a force to be reckoned with. When asked about his decision to go solo, Cisco said, The crowd started dwindling as many people weren't coming to see Drew Hill perform. I think it was a cause and effect of what happened to Woody. So after that, I went to the label. I was like, we're trying to jam this new version of Drew Hill down their throats, and we got this kind of open window. I want to do a solo album. Unleash the Dragon was supported by his singles, Thong Song and Incomplete, both of which catapulted Cisco into the mainstream. What I did with my solo album is I recorded everything in-house. So basically, I took all the money that we made from touring and stuff like that, then when Woody left the group, I went into the studio and recorded my solo album with the thong song and all that on it. The label didn't even ask me for a solo album, they wanted another Drew Hill album. Thong song granted Cisco number three of the Billboard Top 100. Things got sweeter when his third follow-up single, Incomplete, catapulted him to the number one spot on both the Billboard Hot 100 chart and the Billboard Hot R&B, Hip Hop singles and track charts. Unleash Your Dragon will go on to sell over 6 million copies in North America, surpassing a record sold from Drew Hill by Miles. 
Cisco also received three Grammy nominations for Best New Artist, Best R&B Album, and Best Male R&B Performance. In 2001, Cisco released his sophomore solo album, Return of Dragon. Return of Dragon received Billboard success going platinum status according to the Recording Industry Association of America. However, Cisco did receive much fanfare when it came to the release of both singles from the album, Can I Live and Dance For Me were commercial failures. So much so that the debut of his third single on the album never came to be due to the poor performance of his first two singles. David Crowley of Vibe shined light on the softer side of his album, which showcased his incredible vocal range. Return of Dragon largely shows Cisco's growth as a man and a musician. And you do not even need a thong to enjoy it. Feeling similar sentiments, Jason Birchmeyer of All Music gave his highlights to the album's producers and songwriters for not overwhelming the fans with unnecessary tracks, yet courting listeners with catchy yet sexy songs, instead hailing it an energetic, slick, and stylish with plenty of subtle sex and overt gloss. Everything early 2000s pop listeners demand in their superstars. Burst Mario went on to say, in short, Cisco gives you exactly what you want, assuming you like his debut album, offer a cannot miss collection of should be, hit and even more of his ceaseless crooning. Although more than a dozen critics felt like despite the commercial plummet of Return of the Dragon, musically, it was a strong follow-up behind Unleash Your Dragon. Not everyone thought their Return of Dragon was a buried treasure. Rolling Stone's Barry Walters was less than thrilled with the execution of the project, pointing fingers to everyone from the producers, songwriters, and mixers to Cisco himself, labeling it a messing album. Walter goes on to say that it's instrumentally inventive, melodically underdeveloped, vocally overcooked, and lyrically just plain lazy. As an artist, hearing such criticism would take the steam out of any efforts to climb the charts once again but not with Cisco. With his sophomore effort earning mixed reviews and an even worse commercial performance, the following year, Cisco went back to join forces with some familiar faces and a new one. His bandmates Jazz, Nokio, Woody Rock, and Newcomer turning the group into a quintet, Scola. The reunion would go on to produce Drew World Order, released November 26, 2002. The album would peak at number two on the US Billboard Top R&B and Hip Hop Album Chart. Despite the accolades Drew World Order received, Cisco would not emerge back to the music scene for another eight years when he again joined Drew Hill, now missing Woody Rock and Scola, but adding on singer Tail. This would be the last time new music would be released involving Cisco for 13 years. During that time, Cisco managed to stay in the limelight by transitioning to television and movies. He landed a supporting role in movies such as Snow Dogs, starring Cuba Gooding Jr., and Get Over It with Kirsten Dunst. MTV gave him his own dance competition show titled Cisco's Shakedown, which only lasted 20 episodes. In an attempt to stay afloat, he signed on to be a contestant on several reality shows, which unsung artists often resort to. Gone Country and Celebrity Big Brother 2010 were just a couple where his involvement was also short-lived. One would think if Cisco was dominating the charts as he was, why would he seemingly disappear overnight from the public eye? The kinds of things that business partners want you to do to promote your music a lot of times. It takes a precedence over the music itself. The artist stated in a 2015 interview with ABC News, Cisco has been very vocal over the years regarding him and his label having differences in priorities musically. The reputation of being difficult to work with and clashing with execs over collaborations has also affected Cisco's advancement beyond his debut solo album. Cisco mentioned on the episode of Oprah's Network own series, Where Are They Now?, that he simply didn't play the game. Instead of hiring the producers the label assigned to him, Cisco would hire family or friends that he deemed to be equally as talented to assist in creating his tracks for his new album. The same goes for featuring artists on his songs. He would source much lesser known talent from his hometown in Baltimore that he thought to be just as qualified as the popular acts his label tried to pair him with. Once you get to that level of success, you have to play the game. And that's what I did not understand. I thought that once you get success, your job was the Robin Hood situation. You know what I mean? I'm from Baltimore. Nobody has anything. So if anybody had talent, I was hiring my uncle, my cousin, you know, getting people that I knew to run the studio. Me and the label just started bumping heads because I was hard to work with. Because instead of putting their person behind the console, I would put my person behind the console. Instead of getting their rapper to rap on it, I would get my cousin to rap on it because I'm like, hey, we're going to eat too. You know what I mean? I was doing the best that I could to feed my family and bring the money back to Baltimore. The tug of war played between Cisco and his label ultimately was the reason why their relationship would deteriorate. 
During the back and forth dance between his solo career and one with his ever-changing group, Drew Hill, much of his time on a hiatus was spent with his family, adding on a new addition with his then longtime fiance and now wife, Elizabeth, a son named Ryu Andrews. He shares a daughter whom he featured in the controversial music video for Thong Song from a previous relationship. In 2015, 14 years after his second solo project, the wait was finally over. Cisco released his third solo album under his new label, Massenburg Media. Founded by Kedar Massenburg, former president of Motown Records, and his personal label, Dragon Music, entitled Last Dragon. Unfortunately, the wait may have been a little too long. The album tanked. The Last Dragon did not even manage to appear on the top 100 Billboard chart. Much of the criticism was due to his lack of originality. Critics' feedback was brutal and unrelenting. Many said that he was playing catch up with the much younger chart topping acts of the time such as Chris Brown, Trey Songz, and others alike. Others found it to be poorly arranged and executed. It was clear to those who listened that Cisco had lost his true musical identity. It is not clear in recent times if he was able to regain it. So what is Cisco doing now? In 2019, he released his second EP under his label Dragon Music Group, celebrating the 20th anniversary of his first solo album, Unleash the Dragon. This piece he titled Genesis EP. Since then, Cisco now lives in a quiet life with his wife and two kids in Maple Grove, Minnesota. With over eight top 40 hits between his solo career and his time with Drew Hill under his belt, the one thing he has that a lot of new, young performers have yet to master is the characteristic of resilience and tenacity that it takes in the music industry in order to leave a mark in the Billboard history all the while having the peace and comfort of saying that he did it his way. Stay up to date with the latest news and comedy by subscribing here to our YouTube channel. Follow Comedy Hype across all social media and look out for original content on our new streaming service at ComedyHype.com. For Hype Plus, I'm Terrence Sims.